March the 15th, 2020, I was watching a YouTuber called Tai Lun's Dragon Ball What If on what if Goku had trained intensely during the 5 year time gap between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. I love this idea so much, but Thailand didn't continue the series after one part. So this left me thinking, what if I did this myself and explored this story on my own? I put this idea off for around another month or so before deciding to publish my first video on May the 12th of 2020. It's been over a year since I've created my channel Vegito Plays and I would like to thank everyone for their amazing support. So now without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Surprisingly enough, my first series on what if Goku had trained intensely before Reddit is one of my most popular series in my entire channel history. So I thought, why not just make a remake of it, but make it better than ever. Of course, this story will not be completely identical to the one I did over a year ago, but there will be very similar similarities. Start off during the time skip between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, where Goku knows that there will be threats such as Piccolo coming in the future. So, he has to dedicate himself fully to his training. So during this time, Goku trains intensely, pushing his body past its limits. With the power of Zenkai boost and pure Saiyan potential, Goku was able to grow exponentially stronger. During this time, Goku even attempted to go into the hyperbolic time chamber one more time. He was able to go in for a time period of around 5 months before his body collapses on him and he's forced to come out. However, during this 5 months of training, Goku actually improved substantially due to the 10 times gravity that was present in the hyperbolic time chamber. So now 5 years has passed by. Before we discuss about Goku's fight against Reddit, let's do talk about some power levels. Goku will be at a power level of 800, which is a huge jump from his original of 416. Unfortunately for Piccolo, he will still be stuck at the same power level of 408. Anyways, let's get into the fight between Goku and Reddit. After the reunion at Kame House was interrupted by Reddit, Reddit immediately pummels Goku and takes Gohan away. Goku was pissed off and Piccolo offered to help. So together, Goku and Piccolo went to confront Reddit. The fight between Goku, Piccolo and Reddit begins and they all exchange punches and kicks. Reddit notes that Goku's power level is actually insanely high, quite close to where he stands. However, Reddit still had an upper hand and was able to pummel both Goku and Piccolo. In one last ditch attempt, Goku hugs Reddit and Piccolo uses a special beam cannon to kill them both, causing both of them to succumb to their injuries. However, Reddit warns them that two Saiyans stronger than him will be coming in one Earth year's time. During this year of training, Goku trains on King Kai's planet and the training goes pretty much as usual, just that Goku is able to get more effective training in and is actually quite accustomed to the 10 times gravity. Meanwhile, Piccolo trains Gohan and the Z Fighters train at Kami's lookout. And just like that, one year passes. Before the fight commences, let's talk about some power levels. Piccolo will be slightly higher, at a power level of 3800 instead of 3500, because he wants to catch up to Goku. Meanwhile, the rest of the Z Fighters remain the same, while Goku himself stands at a power level of 13,000 instead of 8,000. A huge jump from his previous power level. As Goku makes his way to the battle, the fight begins between the Cyberman and Yamcha. Yamcha, however, lets his guard down, and as the Cyberman was about to kill Yamcha for good, Goku steps in, knocking the Cyberman out of the way. Due to him possessing a higher power level, he was able to reach the battle on time. With a few swift punches, Goku was able to eliminate all of the Cybermen immediately. Nappa frowns at this. He didn't know that Goku would be this strong. Nappa lunges straight at Goku, and Goku immediately dodges his punch and lands a solid kick on Nappa's chest, sending Nappa flying into the floor. Nappa was in pain. How was Kakarot this strong? He had no idea. Vegeta walks up to Nappa, giving him a hand. Nappa takes Vegeta's hand, thinking that Vegeta wanted to help him up, but instead Vegeta flings Nappa into the air and kills Nappa for good. Everyone was shocked at Vegeta's utter and brutal display of power. Goku was angry that an innocent had been sacrificed and looks at Vegeta angry. Meanwhile, 
Vegeta merely utters that Nappa was a disgrace. Goku, Goku charges straight at Vegeta. However, Vegeta was expecting this move as he dodges swiftly out of the way. Goku immediately follows up with many continuous punches, with Vegeta just keeps dodging, dodging, and dodging. Goku, knowing that he has no power advantage over Vegeta, suddenly powers up to Kaioken times 2. Vegeta is blinded by Goku's display of speed as Goku lands a solid punch on his chest before landing a punch on his head, sending him barreling into the floor. Vegeta stands back up. He was disoriented. As he looks around frantically, he can't even seem to find Goku, before Goku suddenly appears right behind him, knocking him into the floor once more as Vegeta grunts out in pain. How was Kakarot this fast? Vegeta stands back up on shaky legs. He wasn't gonna let Goku disgrace him like that as he charges up a Gallic gun, preparing to end Goku and Earth all together. Goku char charges up his own Kamehameha as well, preparing to initiate a beam clash with Vegeta. As the two beams collide, the entire Earth shakes and all the Z fighters are sent flying back by the intense gust of wind that they were facing. This was incredible power that they were both displaying. Vegeta's sheer anger at Goku allows him to have a temporary power boost, and this causes Goku to struggle even in Kaioken times 2. Goku goes to Kaioken times 3. Immediately, his Kamehameha obliterates Vegeta's Gallic gun, sending Vegeta flying into the stratosphere. Goku was worried that he had overdone it, that he had accidentally killed Vegeta in the heat of the battle. However, he suddenly sees Vegeta spiraling down back onto Earth, injured and fainted, but alive. Goku heaves a sigh of relief as Vegeta face plants straight onto the floor. As Goku stands over Vegeta, he has an internal struggle. Should he finish Vegeta off right now or should he spare him? After all, Vegeta was a merciless and brutal killer who didn't even care about his own comrades. However, Goku decided that he would spare Vegeta this time around. All the Z fighters looked at Goku in mixed expressions of anger and fear. How could he spare such a heartless monster? Goku merely shucks, saying that if Vegeta wanted to commit evil acts again, he would just have to stop him one more time. It was no big deal. With the saga out of the way, we can finally venture into the Frieza saga, which I'll leave for the next part. So how do you guys enjoy this old what if being brought back? With Vegeta now on Earth, how would the Frieza saga change? Well, we'll find out next time on Dragon Ball Z.